Hey Orchard, it's about day 762 of the pandemic. <laughs> Not really, but it feels like it. But anyway, I wanted to uh, just give you a quick update, uh, some encouragement this week. Uh, I wanted to answer a question that we've received as senior leaders and something I think that uh, I think is important for, for you all to hear our, our response to, and that is, uh, how are we doing financially? And, and I, I think it's a great question. I think it's a sincere question. I think people are, are truly concerned about, about us, about our ministry, about our staff. And so uh, thank you for asking the question. And uh, I think the short answer is that we are really thankful. We're really grateful for where we are. In fact, every time that I am able, I, I like to give our, our donors, our, our people who have been giving so generously, uh, thanks. And I know that this is such a strange time. And so uh, some people actually have the benefit of not really experiencing anything different right now uh, when it comes to their finances. Some are actually wondering where they're gonna get food for the table. And so, and then there's a whole host of people are in between and. Uh, many of us are maybe just thinking, well, what in the world is this going to hold and, and what does the future hold? And so I think we're, we're feeling the effects of all that as a church and as a staff and as senior leaders. And, um, you know, we're trying to be as cautious as we can. And so uh, we recognize that. So the longer answer to the question, how are we doing financially, is, uh, is this, that we are down. We are down about 10% in our giving uh, for the year through, through April. Um, that doesn't necessarily cause uh, major alarm for us uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that at this time of year, we're never <laughs> ahead or uh, rarely ahead, I would say. And, uh, and, but the gap is a little bigger this year than some, sometimes uh, for understandable reasons. The other reasons that we're not uh, so terribly alarmed right now is that we've been able to cut expenses and while the giving's down about 10%, our expenses are also down about between 4 and 5%. Now, I think that that number could actually be a little bit larger, but we front load some of our bills in January and February, uh, some of those annual bills we pay out, and, uh, and so some of our expenses are, are at the beginning of the year. We also have taken some steps, and I want you to hear some of those steps that we have taken. Uh, we are being cautious uh, moving forward. I think in January, we actually had some carryover money, money from 2019. And uh, as senior leaders, we decided, well, let's just wait just to, to see a little bit into the year uh, how it's going. And well, we actually kept that money set aside and, and we're thankful that we did uh, for right now. We've also determined that we uh, are holding off and, and shelving any kind of uh, capital improvement. Um, in the past, those kinds of improvements might be uh, our parking lot, our atrium renovation, our gym renovation, uh, the extension of gravel here in Grundy, uh, capital projects like that, we've just put on hold. The other thing that we've done, uh, I think that's important for you to know, is that we've secured a PPP loan, which is um, a government uh, loan slash grant through the SBA and a local lender. Uh, we worked with a local lender, Pat and Kristen, uh, worked with them and uh, we've secured that uh, and that will help directly with our payroll expenses and up to 25% of that can actually be used in other ways uh, for interest on mortgage payments, uh, for rent, for utilities. And so over these next couple of months, um, we, we are going to be using that. Uh, that can actually turn into a grant and that could be a huge, huge help for us in this season and so we're thankful for that. Um, the other thing that we've also done is just uh, we uh, suspended our mortgage payments. We're doing interest only in May, June, and July. So just so you know, um, while our giving in our general fund is down about 10%, uh, we still have a building fund and we still have a mortgage. Uh, our Let's Go campaign ended in 2019, and that, that was a, a great uh, campaign. It helped us uh, make a dent in, in the cost of uh, our building here in Grundy County and uh, some other debt that we had uh, was huge for that. Um, however, we still have a mortgage and we still have uh, to pay that every month. And uh, I will say that this year our, our building fund giving has uh, really taken a hit. And so that's one place where if you have the capacity to give, or uh, you maybe feel called to give, um, we would ask for you to consider uh, a gift towards the building fund. That would be helpful for us um, uh, moving forward. And uh, I know that 
that not all of us are able right now, and that's okay. Uh, but if you are, I, I hope that you might pray about that and consider that as we move forward. So just so you know, we're so thankful for the wisdom of uh, our asset management team, uh, for the board. Uh, they are helping us make good decisions. And how are we doing? Well, we're doing okay. Uh, we know that there are some challenges ahead, and we, we, don't, we can't predict the future, but we're trusting God. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, he has blessed us through you and uh, through your generosity, and so thank you. I just want to close by reading from 2 Corinthians um, chapter 8, and, and it's a little bit lengthy, but I think you'll, you'll understand why when I read it. But uh, just to set the context, um, Paul is actually talking to his friends in Corinth. He's trying to collect funds for, for other Christians, other believers in Jerusalem who've been under intense persecution and uh, gone through so much, and he wants to send help to them, and he's appealing to the Corinthians in that, and, th and this is what he says. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. And I just want to say, uh, friends, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for standing with us. Um, we know it's a, t a challenging time um, for many of you, but we just wanted to say thanks again, and we did want to uh, let you know where we are. Um, and if God is leading you uh, to give, um, we would welcome that and we would uh, be grateful for that. Um, bless you. Uh, may the Lord uh, keep you in these days ahead and give you his peace. Amen. See ya.